This new Bluetooth LE Audio AuraCast feature is going to blow your mind. Hi guys, Rachel Cook, Doctor of Audiology at Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And in today's video, I'm gonna be answering your burning questions about AuraCast, the future of hearing aid connectivity, coming up. I recently attended the American Academy of Audiology conference in Atlanta, Georgia, and as expected, this is a conference full to the brim with industry experts on all of the things new and exciting with hearing healthcare and hearing technologies. During this conference, I attended a bunch of amazing sessions and seminars, including one of my favorites by Dave Hollander, the Senior Director of Marketing for the Bluetooth Special Interest Group. During this session, he answered the most frequent questions about AuraCast a new form of broadcast audio that is absolutely going to revolutionize how we hear in public venues. He did such a great job, in fact, that I was inspired to make today's video with the hopes of answering some of your burning questions about AuraCast technology. But before we do that, if you could please take a moment to give this video a thumbs up, it really helps videos like these reach a wider audience. And while you're at it, if you have not yet already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button with notification bell so that you never miss any one of our newly released videos. Now, let's start with a quick intro about AuraCast before we dive right in. Most people are familiar with Bluetooth. Bluetooth is a form of wireless communication between electronic devices, typically to transmit audio, like music, podcasts, and audiobooks. Bluetooth connections are everywhere, allowing you to play your Spotify playlist while you're in your car, listen to your audiobook through your AirPods, and even take phone calls through your hearing aids. But one major drawback of this technology has always been its one-to-one -one connection. This means that the device sending the signal can only send it to one device or one set of devices at one time. Take, for example, a car stereo, a set of headphones, or even a pair of hearing aids. You can stream to one of those things but never all three at the same time. That is until the introduction of Bluetooth low energy audio. This is a new form of wireless audio that will allow a single transmitter to send that signal to unlimited, yes, unlimited recipient. Take some of the most crowded or challenging listening environments, like conference rooms, plays, shows, and theaters. Now, anybody will be able to have audio from that event streamed directly into their own pair of headphones or hearing aids, significantly improving sound clarity and sound quality. Not only that, but using this different form of Bluetooth, sound quality is expected to significantly improve while the battery drain of your headphones or your hearing aids is expected to significantly reduce. Which is great news. Now, there has been a lot, and I mean a lot of talk about how this technology impacts the hearing aid space but it's really an incredible advancement for pretty much anybody in the world. So with that, let's answer some of the most frequently asked questions about AuraCast. What are some examples of devices that will be able to receive signals from AuraCast transmitters? LE Audio enabled receivers will eventually expand to include hearing aids, cochlear implants, headphones, and earbuds. Which devices are ready to receive audio from AuraCast transmitters? They are Resound, Oticon, Signia, and Cochlear Americas. However, the device might actually require a firmware update to unlock this feature. Several brands of headphones already have this ability, and over the coming years, it is expected to expand nearly universally. You will be able to easily identify when products offer this feature due to the AuraCast logo that will be placed in a prominent location on product packaging, just like the Bluetooth logo is on the packaging right now. You'll be able to wirelessly receive the signal from TVs, laptops, cell phones, tablets, sound systems, and public address systems like at airports and other forms of public transit. Registered locations will receive stickers that they can post in prominent locations so you know you can link up while you're there. As Dave described it, connecting to AuraCast broadcasts will be extremely similar to how you link up to Wi-Fi networks right now. Just like how you can go into a public venue and open up your Wi-Fi menu and see what different networks are available, so too is the plan for the AuraCast broadcasts where you will be able to open up essentially a list of different possible transmissions that you can link up with and select the one that you'd like to join without even having to pair anything together. 
One awesome example he gave of this would be that each TV at a sports bar could transmit its own audio to you, and you would be able to select the signal from whichever game you want to watch and stream that game only right into your headphones or hearing aids. What is the transmission range going to be? Honestly, this is a great question because it's probably one of the most common complaints that I get about hearing aids right now. And that is that the Bluetooth connectivity isn't very strong and you definitely can't go that far away from the source sending the signal before that transmission is cut. And at the present moment, that transmission range is about 30 feet or so. The LE audio transmission range will be nearly 10 times that of the current Bluetooth that we use right now. You can do a little bit of quick math to determine that that means that this transmission range for LE audio broadcasts can be nearly 300 feet. Boom. Am I going to be able to use anything that I already own to send signals to AuraCast enabled devices? Or am I going to need to buy all new everything? Products are in development right now to retrofit current devices and allow them to send LE audio broadcasts. This includes plug-in dongles for smartphones, laptops, and tablets. This also includes streamers for televisions and other big screens, and adapters for public address systems and other large sound systems. It will mostly be the receivers, aka hearing aids and headphones, that will likely need to be upgraded in order to take advantage of this new advancement in technology. Is this going to take the place of telecoil technology? No, but it will operate alongside audio induction loops. And the hope is that this will expand enhanced audio options for all individuals in public venues, even if you don't have hearing loss or hearing aids. I keep hearing about AuraCast, but is anything actually happening with it? This was a monumental effort to try to get so many companies, manufacturers, and regulatory boards on the same exact page. Understandably, that means that it is going to take several years until we see full or widespread implementation. What I can say is that 90% of smartphones are predicted to support LE Audio by 2027, and that nearly two and a half million public locations will have AuraCast broadcast audio by 2030. And that is so exciting. Will AuraCast benefit individuals without hearing loss? Absolutely. Because this technology is expanding into headphones, we are about to see just about everyone we know using AuraCast. This is also huge because even individuals that have normal hearing still tend to struggle to hear well in some of these more challenging listening environments like theaters and auditoriums and conference halls and things like that. In the past, you used to have to either use assistive listening devices or have telecoil enabled hearing aids and hook them up to whatever audio induction loop was in that public venue. But now, as long as you've got the compatible receivers for that technology, headphones or hearing aids, you'll be able to link up to the audio for that venue. What other forms of accessibility will AuraCast enable? AuraCast is going to be fantastic for language accessibility. This is because AuraCast will allow for multiple broadcasts in the same space. I can think of so many different areas where this could be super, super useful. One perfect example of where this could make a really big impact is for conferences like the one that I was just at. There were a lot of international attendees that had different native languages and with AuraCast broadcast audio, now if there are interpreters or translators for different languages there, they will be able to send their own broadcast out to individuals in the audience that link up to the broadcast in their own language. So cool. I do also think that this technology will transfer over to educational environments, especially because accessibility is a really big deal in those educational settings. And this is just gonna open up so many new opportunities. Will AuraCast be more widely adopted than telecoil and hearing loop technology? Here's the thing, AuraCast is not going to see complete or full or widespread implementation for quite some time. It takes a lot of time to see all of these systems get switched over and upgraded to become compatible with one another. And until AuraCast is available on a bit more of a widespread basis, I think we're really gonna see both types of technology being used concurrently. And this is already true for most technologies. Uh, at the present moment, both myself and my husband 
each have an iPhone, and yet because his iPhone is newer than mine, his uses a completely different charging cable than mine does, which can cause some problems when I hop in his car and he hops in mine, and you see what I mean. It's pretty common for new and upgraded technology to release even while the older technology is still around and to see both of those technologies used together for quite some time. But I don't think anybody would be sad to see telecoil technology phased out if what phased in its place was Oracast technology that allows way more individuals, not just those with hearing aids, to connect to these broadcast audios and have a much better time hearing and understanding speech in challenging listening environments. All right, I hope this helped answer some of your burning questions about Oracast technology. If you're looking to upgrade your hearing aids soon, be sure to talk to your hearing healthcare provider about Oracast technology and see if that's something that should be included with your next hearing aid purchase. If you have any further questions about Oracast technology, make sure you drop them down in the comment section below because we want to know what you want to know. And finally, again, a big thank you to Dave Hollander for his presentation that inspired this video on Oracast technology.